day campers. Today we are going to talk about how to use a multimeter to troubleshoot electrical problems in an RV. This video will be broken down into three parts. First we'll talk about using the multimeter to test AC volts. Second we'll talk about using the multimeter to test DC volts. Third we'll talk about the ohms scale of the multimeter. This video only uses troubleshooting as a way to show how to use a multimeter. It is not intended to show all the possible types of electrical problems that can occur in an RV. For more information about the power systems in your RV, check out our video called Understanding RV Power Systems. First, let's talk about AC power. This is the same as the power in a sticks and bricks home. So here's the scenario. You wake up in the morning and the coffee pot is not working. Look around and see what other things in the RV are not working. Check to see if the TV has power. What about the microwave? What about the lights? They are 12 volt or house battery, so they should be working. If they are not, then power has been off long enough to completely discharge your battery. We'll talk more about that later. Now that we know what's working and what's not, we know where to start testing. If absolutely nothing is working, then we have a total power loss. Most of the time, if this, if this is the case, the problem is most likely the RV park's pedestal or the power company. This is the first test we'll do. Later, we'll talk about partial failures where some things work, but others do not. So now let's head out to the pedestal to use our multimeter and see what's going on. Now we are outside and at the pedestal. First we'll do a visual check. If you have an EMS, look at the display. If it shows you have power, then the problem is in the RV. If not, we'll continue to test the pedestal. Next, look at the breakers to see if any of them are tripped. Here's where the multimeter comes in. We are going to test the outlets to see if they have power. Most ped pedestals have three outlets, a 50 amp RV connector, a 30 amp RV connector, and a 15 amp GFCI outlet. First, let's test the 15 amp GFCI outlet because it's the easiest to test. We need to set the meter on AC volts and the 200 volt scale. Now we can test the outlets. The GFCI has one hundred and eighteen volts. So it's good. Next we want to test the connector your RV is connected to to see if it has power. In order to test the connector, we'll need to unplug the RV cable so we can get the meters probe into the outlet. For the sake of this test, we'll test the 30 amp plug. The 30 amp connector shows that it's working. If absolutely nothing at the pedestal has power, it's time to contact the RV park to find out what's going on. If you happen to see a fellow RVer out and about, you could ask them if they have power. If the pedestal checks out, then the problem is inside the RV. Now, as I said earlier, when we were looking around to see what is working, if some outlets work and some don't, check the GFCI outlets first. Most of the time it's in the bathroom. Remember to change the meter back to the 200 volt range. Now we'll check the GFCI outlet. You will have several GFCI outlets in your RV. This outlet controls all of them, including the kitchen where my coffee pot is plugged in. Reset the GFCI outlet, then use the meter to test it. This takes a minute. Then use the outlet tester to test outlet this tester is a handy tool for a quick check and is available on Amazon for around 20 bucks. The lights show the condition of the outlet. These two lights indicate the outlet is working correctly. The tester has a chart to explain what different lights mean. 
Then you want to test individual outlets with your meter or outlet tester. If we had power at the pedestal, but nothing works inside the RV, then the problem is between the pedestal and the RV. Now we need to test the circuit breaker panel inside. Carefully remove the cover for the circuit breakers. First, check the main breaker. Check to see if it's tripped. If not, use meter to check for output. Just to be thorough, let's check the individual breakers. Look for trip breakers, then check for volts. Now we know where the problem is, so it's time to fix it, which is not part of this video. Before we start to check the batteries, we need to set our meter to DC volts, the 20 volt scale. Now we can check the output of our batteries. Because the RV is still connected to shore power and the converter, also known as the charger, the voltage should be over 13 volts. If it's not, the converter is not charging the batteries, and that is likely the problem. Now that we know what the voltage is at the batteries, we can test a little further to see what the problem is. To, the, to do that, we need to go back inside the RV. If battery voltage was okay, we can be pretty sure the converter is charging. If not, we would put our meter back to AC volts to find out why the converter is not charging. You would look at the breaker for the converter and test to see if it is working and check to be sure you have shore power. But we are doing DC volts here, so we'll not show that at this point. If battery voltage was okay at the batteries, we need to figure out why our DC stuff is not working. The newer RV fuse panels have blown fuse indicator lights. You look for those and or use your meter to see if you have battery voltage coming out. That covers the DC volts portion of a uh, multimeter. Next, we'll talk a little about the ohms. Or the ohm scale measures the resistance to the flow of current through a part of an electrical circuit. This would be used to look for an open or infinite resistance in a circuit, or the most common use would be to see if a fuse is bad or open. To start, we'll switch to the 200 ohm scale. When you test the fuse, be careful to touch only one side of the fuse with your fingers because your body can conduct electricity. This is a blown fuse, so it shows open when we test it correctly. This is a good fuse and shows on the meter as a short or no resistance. That's all there is to the ohm scale of the meter. You can use these same principles to test any part of an electrical circuit. That brings us to the end of our little video. That's the basics to using a multimeter and how it can be used to troubleshoot electrical problems with your RV. Thanks for listening and we hope we have been able to answer your multimeter questions. Please remember to like and subscribe.